That's one reason I was glad to write the book. It seemed like that's something he would want to do. But as I wrote it, and the more I think about it, it's as much about the average working man during that era as it is about him. He's sort of representative of the, uh, of the people who worked in the coal mines, the steel mills, the, the Alcoa plant here in New Kensington. There was the big PPG plant in Ford City. And Western Pennsylvania was really the headquarters of, the industri of industry at that time. And my father was just one person who was representative of that, who did his share of hard work, but only after he tried to avoid it by going to Chicago and the depression brought him back home. My dad was Polish. He was actually born in Poland, came over as an infant. He was born in February 1910 and came over in November of 1910. He had two older sisters at that time. Ended up having eight children in his, in his family. He was the oldest boy. He had three brothers and four sisters. So there were four boys and four girls in his family. And my mother, ironically, had the same thing. Four boys and four girls. And she was the oldest girl. She never remarried after my father was, was killed. Never really talked about him much. P probably emotionally difficult for her at, at that point. And the one thing she would tell me often is I would have liked him. My mother was living with his parents in East Vandegrift, which was a 100% Eastern European during those days. As you could see it uh, was a good, was safe, was sort of isolated physically and culturally isolated in a lot of ways. But it's it's down a big hill from it's in a, its own little valley. It was a very homogeneous, all Eastern European, Polish, Slovak, and Lithuanian. And there was a little you know, some bickering among the three groups, but not much. They were all treated pretty much the same. And the kids all got along. They all went to grade school here. There was a baseball field right here. And I, there was two baseball fields and I, a lot of kids. And I think the steel workers like to see their sons, daughters have a good time and play because they knew it was going to end events soon. It would, it would end hard when it ended. So when they were young, they really liked seeing them play it a lot and they played a lot of baseball down here. There were a lot of good players and they had the river right here where they could swim and they did enjoy themselves. And most of them didn't go to high school. They all went to grade school and they they did a lot of playing. It was safe. There were very, very few cars around back in those days. And most of the people in East Vanneker probably couldn't afford them either when the, my dad was growing up. So they played ball, and, and I did think they did jump the trains on a little when they would slow up for towns and just ride a, a little bit way on them, not far enough to walk around. And they, they said they had a pretty good life until it was time to go to the mill, and then things things changed. And luckily, my grandfather was wise enough to and not hold his son back when he decided, you know, he was going to try to. Uh, get out of spending his life in the mill and sort of encourage them. And he, he reminded his wife, who was hesitant, that they had left Poland when they were young, so you got to let him do what he wants to do also. My dad was a hobo during the Great Depression. He was also the son of a steel worker. And when he, he was 18, it was time for him to go in the steel mill, and he decided, he had an uncle in Chicago, he was going to get out of the mill, be one of the few Polish boys born in 1910 that could get out of the mill. Went to Chicago, during the Great De the Depression came, he had to go back home. And he and his friends would sit around and just worry about the future. You know, here was nobody working. There were a bunch of guys in their 20s didn't know what was going to happen to them, what kind of future they had of anything, because nobody knew then when the Depression would end. So he decided, uh, rather than sit around and grouse, he would take a trip and he took 48 cents, symbolic for a penny estate, <coughs> 
hop trains and went out to see uh, see the whole country and got to all 48 states. You know, during this time, his father, who was a man of some wisdom, was supportive of him. First of all, going to Chicago, because he saw what the mill could do to people. And he thought of, if my son has a wherewithal to get out of the mill, good for him. He was supportive of him. First of all, leaving Chicago, going to Chicago. And secondly, taking his hobo trip. When they left, they made a big deal out of it. And one of the guys got a hold of a car and they drove him to Pittsburgh. Because remember, his friend went with him, Kelly, for the first 16 states. They didn't hop the trains here, but probably saw them going by every day and they got some wonderlust in them. And the little tramp movies were big back in that era too, so that could have uh, fostered him to do that. No, when he left, I know they, his friends drove into Pittsburgh because they wanted to, they get into a big train yard. They wanted to make sure they got the right train going to the right place the first time. My father went out, he, he saw the whole country, ocean to ocean, you know, the Rockies, the uh, deserts. And more importantly, he met people from all over the country. He kept the journal, first of all, as well. I mentioned that's how I read that he was a happy person. He sent postcards home almost every day, seems like. He, he sent most of them to his good friends who were keeping track of his mileage. But he's, a lot of people I talked to in later years from East Vandegrift talked about getting postcards from my father. In reading his journals, you could see he was sort of a happy person. No, uh, he has two full pages of notebooks and there's no complaining. No, whatever happened, happened. You know, he got some hard things, of course, uh, that, that long on the road thrown in jail a couple times, had to walk through the, thrown off a train in the middle of the desert, had to walk 22 miles. The railroad cops, the bulls were tough at times, but he just seemed to understand that was their jobs, you know, that, that's what they do. And didn't have any animosity or any, any complaints with however he was treated. My father, he got invited into houses. He did hobo work, you know, he chopped wood and bummed some meals, but several people invited him into their homes, and this was a depression, and he said he, they talked economics and politics. He learned a lot. There was a flood in East Vanegraaff in 1936, and I think most of them were destroyed because he mentioned that he wanted to get them back, and I think he did want to write something later in his life. In fact, he mailed the first journal when the first book was filled up. He mailed it home from South Dakota to one of his friends. In the, in the last page he write, do not copy, I, I will enlarge it on this. So he's probably gonna give more details, of course, and I think write something, and that's probably why he wanted the postcards. He did eventually have to go into the mill, of course, and he did in about 1935, when the depression started to end a little bit for tough jobs in the mill, the open hearths, the blast furnaces, the real difficult jobs. who get out of the mill if he could, because the mill did eat men up almost. Sometimes. They really can, can break them. It was tough, tough work. So my father got out, and the ironic thing is at the end, he ends up getting killed in the mill. Yeah, this, the mill in Vanegar, which, which was a, a more difficult mill, my father got out of and didn't get killed there, had fatalities. My one of my, be my best friend's father died because he worked with acids in the mill and his skin just turned dark and he ended up dying of poison when my friend was two years old. My uncle through marriage, his brother was run over by a train in the mill, has had his legs cut off. They had uh, trains delivering coal in and there were a lot of uh, there was a full-size train in the mill delivering things around, and he, he got run over by that. So there were fatalities in the mill, and read about much other mills with uh, many more. But many of them were uh, ethnics who couldn't speak English or understand instructions that well. And they also had the toughest jobs, too. So they were probably put in harm's way more than anybody else. But there were many, many who were killed or maimed, and then if you were maimed or had a, a lost an arm or a leg, you couldn't work. There was no workman's compensation. 
no, you didn't collect no unemployment insurance, and you were family was put in peril when something like that happened. And because of that, a lot of their sons went into the mill early. They had to support the family. It went in. I know people went in age 14, 15, so lied about their age, but they had to because there was no money coming in. Urban Works, you guys still opened a new plant in about 1939. The people with the least seniority in Vandegrift, to which he was one, went. It was supposed to be a safer mill. There was no steel made there, no blast furnaces, no open hearths. It was all processing, and he was unfortunate enough to be standing at a place where a crane man dropped a load of steel. It was tons. It was just, just, uh, just tons. It was a, a huge load of steel. And he was in the slab yard. He died in. A March of 40, I was born in late December of 39. I was barely two months old at that time. My mother never remarried. Moved back with her mother, who's Italian. My mother's Italian, so I grew up more Italian than Polish then. Because my father's um, father died months after he did. Part, people partly say it was a broken heart. He took it really, really tough. My father's mother and his brothers and sisters moved to uh, Florida in 1945. So I really never knew them that much. i seen him, we rode and talked, but uh, it was with the Italian people that I grew up with. And they had the same backgrounds, steel workers, coal miners. As I mentioned, two of my mother's brothers were at the Irvin Works the day my father was killed. And I noticed on the uh, plaque, there were, I don't know, maybe a dozen deaths at, this, at that plant over the years, and most of them were in that slab yard. Probably caused by the same type of thing, someone just losing their, uh, craneman losing a, a, a load of steel. And he was the first person killed at the Irvin work. There's, there's not a plaque put at the entrance, and his name is the first one on there. Polish-American boy in 1928 who thought he was going to get out of going to the mill. And he ended up getting killed in the mill. And he worked in a dangerous mill in Vandegrift, which he survived for a few years. He went into the safer mill in the Irvin works, and he was killed shortly after he began there.